What is going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another edition of On the Road to Victory. I am your host, Jimmy Smith, and I hope you're all having yourselves a great week. I know I have already had quite a long one myself, and uh, obviously here tonight it is almost 10.20. A little bit of a late night for you sickos out there, but I want to keep this draft series going. And, man, after work, a lot of these days have been going on leads and doing things, and today that is exactly what happened. And I was just like, oh, my God, I'm never going to get the show out. And I thought to myself, well, I'm going to get home and I'm going to finish this damn show and I'm going to get it out to you here tonight and we're going to do it live. So that is exactly what we are here to do tonight. And if you caught the quarterbacks running backs show, uh, you saw that, you know, we broke down all of those and we're going to do the same thing here tonight. And all of your questions are welcome. Clearly you're talking about wide receivers here tonight, but uh, whatever's on your mind. I appreciate all of you. It is a late one here tonight, but if you're watching this later, love to hear your thoughts and uh, go birds indeed, my man. And uh, where's he at? Is he creeping around me? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's a great man. Appreciate you tuning in here. And yo, what is going on, Tiffany? Appreciate each and every one of you taking the time here tonight. But let's jump into this. Let's, uh, if you've missed any of these shows, what we're doing is we look at the picks the Eagles have what we have at the position, then we look at the guys that are available in the draft, and then my top fits for the Eagles. Love to hear your thoughts, whether you agree, disagree, what your thoughts are on the wide receiver position, but we're going to start it right off. We're going to look right at the Eagles draft picks here, and you can see eight picks this year. Let's go. A first, two seconds. Now that third change into a fourth once we traded for Kenny Pickett, so move back 22 spots there, but you got three fifths and a sixth there, so Howie, He's going to be cooking. You know he can always be moving up back. A plethora of things are definitely uh, possibilities here in this year's draft. So you know not only do we have eight picks in this year's draft, but six next year, eight the following year. But, you know, you got rid of two of those sevens, still have two of them. Um, but you've got, you know, eight picks that following year. That third can turn it into a second, uh, the Hassan Reddick trade there. So, you can see uh, how he's got a lot of ammo to play with here. So I expect that, you know, uh, <clears throat> we're going to see some things happening. But, you know, each position we look at here, you know, uh, to me, wide receiver, this is one of those where I think we should be looking to add in the draft. And you can always look at it, every position because best player available, right? But, um, you know, for me, the wide receiver position, you know, we've got some great receivers, but... I have it at number six. If you guys caught that show before I started the draft series, showing you guys my rankings at each of these positions so you can see the importance I have them at. And look, I, I think we're pretty loaded at a lot of spots, but you need a lot of depth at places. And wide receiver, you know, we did not have a third guy last year. And for whatever reason, things weren't getting going. I liked Alameda, but <clears throat> it is what it is. I use Quez. He's gone now. So uh, for me, I like Covey. I like that you brought in Campbell. You brought in Devontae Parker. Sure, competition. Um, but, you know, here is a list of all the receivers we actually have. So, you know, clearly the best duo in the game. But beyond that, who the hell wants to be wide receiver three? You know, you talk about Paris Campbell, Devontae Parker. I'm not even sure they make the team. So you got Nada, Watkins, Davis, Hebert, Harris are here. So you got some guys competing. You hope that Covey can continue to develop because he is a great returner. I mean, regardless, I think that you need to look to add to the wide receiver position. So this class at wide receiver, I think a lot, a lot of talent. And, you know, for me, you don't have to necessarily go high. Now, if somebody's fallen or, you know, there are a couple in front of you, you want to trade up, grab somebody. There are some very talented receivers in this draft. But I also feel that there are a lot of places that you can grab, grab some of these guys, some sleeper guys, some things that. I think that really, you know, could benefit the Eagles, you know, whatever way it goes. So we shall see. Um, and uh, look, yeah, I'd love to see him continue to develop here, but I'd like to see him as four. And I'd like to see us add somebody as that three that is, you know, super talented and, you know, on a rookie contract. So, it, hey, look, I'm all about Covey getting better there, but um, I want to see and go birds shine. I appreciate you tuning in, but I want to see an upgrade here. And <clears throat> we're going to take a look at some of these guys and then, uh, well, we'll look at all of them. Then we'll look at the guys. I think that would be perfect fits for that role I'm talking about. But let's take a look here. These are my guys I feel that will be, you know, round seven, undrafted. And, you know, you could definitely look to grab some of these guys. 
uh, after the draft is over, you know, add competition to the room. You know, a guy like Whittington out of Texas, they've got a lot of talent there. Bub Means, man, I really almost had him on my list and uh, he just didn't make it. But that's somebody, you know, I almost had on there. Hayden Hatton, another one, you know, so uh, you've got guys like Jalen Coker. I, I think there's definitely some talented guys that will go undrafted, but um, that's because there's so much uh, talent in this draft when it comes to receivers. So these are my guys that I think on day three, rounds five through six, that's where I've got some of these guys, but I wouldn't be surprised. Some of these guys go a little bit higher. Um, some really talented dudes that have high upside, but some question marks. So, you know, guys like Gold, Smith, Washington, Cowing, McCaffrey's in there, obviously a big name, you know, so some very talented guys there, but I think even more so, you know, more your three, four uh, guys, you know, on day, uh, end of day two, beginning of day three here, I think Johnny Wilson, oh Lord, Roman Wilson, Brandon Rice, Walker and Burton. There's a lot of talent in this draft. Just looking at these guys right here, Malik Washington, someone I wanted to have on my list and didn't Jamari thrash. There's a lot of uh, names here that uh, I would not be mad if the Eagles went ahead and drafted them. But, you know, look again, uh, that's kind of part of the show. And we'll get into that as we talk about the fits and, then looking at the round two guys, and some of these guys, maybe somebody wants to go in the first round, someone like a Xavier Worthy. But uh, you got Lad McConkey. I know a lot of people, you know, are excited about. Uh, Adne Mitchell out there, Coleman, Leggett, Pearsall, Corley. Fra I mean, there is some really talented dudes, and go check these guys out because I'm telling you, this draft is loaded with talent. And for me, you know, this is how I have them, you know, ranked. And this is essentially like my five is – worthy in six seven eight but again i'm going to tell you what my fits are for the eagles but just talking about the best in this class but we all know marvin harrison the best in this class at wide receiver malik neighbors another very talented kid and i think rome odunze from washington and brian thomas could go in the first round here and again some of those other talented kids maybe somebody takes a stab at you never know with these wide receivers so for me that's just how i had them listed but I am staying away from those guys right there in that final list that you saw. I'm not going to have them, so just just know that right now. This is not who the top wide receiver. There's a million shows. You guys already know who the best guys are, and I'll tell you. I mean, you can see in my list who I think the best ones are, but I'm going to tell you who I think the Eagles should be looking for and why I think they should be looking there. Now, I mentioned it earlier. You know, I think that this Eagles team, if there's somebody available, you don't have to shy away from wide receiver just because you have good ones. So uh, look if the first round if somebody's there and they can't believe it. Hey, we'll see. Uh, but good evening to you, Liz. Appreciate you tuning in and uh, love to see you guys sharing that love setting draft indeed. And uh, look, uh, there's a lot of exciting guys here. And we're going to check them out here in a second, but I'm always excited about the draft the sicko season. So let's strap in. Let's take a look at the top 12 fits I've got here at wide receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles in this 2024 draft. So starting us off here at number 12, Anthony Gold. And I kind of moved him around a little bit because I am really enamored with this little guy. 5'8", 172, and he's a great pass catcher. Uh, he's an athlete, and he's got to be at that 5'8 size. He's got good hands, though. And I think that this is somebody that, uh, you know, he's got good bursts off the line. And clearly, at that size, you're going to be a little bit worried about that. And, you know, I think for me, he's got to work on some route running stuff. But I, I just love his talent. He's just an all-around kind of talent. And you could see I had to add all kinds of different stats here for him. So you can see his games. is started 21 out of 41. He's got 84 catches, 1,300 yards. He's got 16.2 uh, yards per reception. And he's got some rushes, one touchdown. He's got... Uh, some kick returns here. So he's a kick returner as well. He helps you all over the place. And, um, and, you know, somebody that tries to block, but not the greatest at blocking. So I think he's a little guy. You don't really expect that from some more of a gadget slot type player that you're looking at here in this offense, but you know, you can use him all over the place. And I think he's exciting with the ball in his hand. So that's somebody that I think the Eagles should definitely uh, be keeping their eye on. If, you know, this kind of, you know, person is available when we talk about, you know, falling in those rounds. You've got three fifth round picks. If he's there near the end or something and you feel you need to grab him, I think that would be an all right upgrade here. And 
kind of giving you another little covey there, essentially. But a uh, big fan of Anthony Gold. Now, at number 11, I've got Aeneas Smith out of Texas A&M. And this kid, this is, all these guys that I have here, obviously, I like them. So, uh, But I look, I'm excited about him. This is more of your kind of slot receiver. And some of these guys, football database, I don't know, man. He, I think he's a little more like 5'9 range, but a uh, little guy. But, dude, you can see over 2,400 yards, and he's got lots of stats. This dude, he can do it all. He punt returns, kick returns. He can run the ball, catch the ball. So four rushing touchdowns, two punt return touchdowns. I mean, this dude, 13.4 yards per catch, over 2,400 yards receiving there. And I think that, you know, he's exciting. He's got a 4.48 40 times. So obviously people are enamored with 40 times, and, oh, that's not the fastest, but still pretty quick. And he's a versatile guy that, you know, again, we talk about use him all over the field. That's what we're looking for. And he's somebody that's great after the catch, obviously being, you know, able to get the ball in your hands and somebody who's actually good at route running. He's got good hands. So this is someone that, you know, not just because of his versatility, he's actually good. Uh, but as a little guy, they got to bulk up when they get into the NFL, got to polish their route running. And these are things that you usually talk about with these young guys. But I think that, you know, sky's the limit for this uh, little dude. And I would be excited if the Eagles grabbed him. Now at number 10, I've got Taj Washington. And I'm telling you, I don't know how much I agree with these heights because if you watch Taj Washington, I don't know how much he looks like he's even 5'10 out there. But uh, all right, sure, I'll go with 5'10. He isn't 5'8. Uh, I'll give him that because some of these guys, I don't know. But he's got a 4.52. But this is, you know, another a piece here that you, you see you can – Get him there at kick returner. Obviously, we talk about those changed rules, so you're going to want to see one of them. But one of the things I like about him is his toughness. The fact that at his size, he actually blocks. He's 5'10", 175. He's got good hands, and he's an explosive player, man. He really is fun to watch. And, you know, we need somebody that is a pass catcher. You know, crazy to say about receivers, but we're sick of watching dropped balls. So I would be all about it. And, look, he has had some – drops in college but i think it's more of like a mental thing and you know i kind of get flashbacks to regular so maybe it scares me a little bit with him that's why i've got him down here a little bit lower but um look i like this kid he's talented and you know again we're talking about people that not necessarily you have to use a high pick on this dude maybe your last pick six round if he's there an undrafted kid he could be you never know so uh, a possibility there but uh moving along Let's get to number nine here, and I've got Jacob Cowing out of Arizona. And this dude, over 4,400 yards, 33 touchdowns, 14.2 yards per reception. You can see he got a few carries there, a rushing touchdown. Uh, he's had some punt returns there. Not the greatest at it, but you can see that he is a versatile piece, and I am a fan of Jacob Cowing here. And look, he is more so your slot receiver and this. 5'11", I just don't agree with. If you watch Cowing, this dude is like 5'8", and this is why I was laughing at the last one. Football database, I think they let these kids tell them what their height is because this dude is very little, but he runs a 4'3", 8". He's a fast little guy, and he is somebody that I really enjoy watching, and he's somebody who's quick and agile with that size. Obviously, you would hope they could be that way, and you know he's a good route runner. He's somebody that He's got good ball skills for his size. He goes up and gets it. But, um, you know, he's somebody that I think could grow into a good receiver. Uh, but not really looking like an outside kind of guy. Strictly pretty much, you know, your slot guy. But helps you in the return game. And I think that, you know, if he could get a little tougher, you never know. I mean, these guys are human beings. So maybe, you know, nothing happens. But maybe he bulks out and sky's the limit for a kid like him. But uh, I really liked his game. So, had him on this list here at number nine. Now at number eight, I've got Keon Coleman, and this is one of the better wide receivers in this draft. And the reason I don't have him high is not because of his ability here, because I think Keon Coleman is a stud. And I do think that he will probably go around the second round, but that's where I talked about. I don't think that the Eagles have to go too high with a wide receiver here. So getting a guy like Keon Coleman, six, four, 215 pounds clearly you know we've got ourselves you know outside receivers and <clears throat> this is kind of you know like your aj brown here so you don't necessarily he's not you know a fit but you can't just sit here and be like oh well we don't need a receiver like this like this is a dude <laughs> this is 
a monster again, like an AJ Brown out there. And I think, you know, his speed for his size is what makes him so fun to watch. He's got great ball skills. And I think that this is a dude that, you know, fun to watch going up and getting that ball, man. He's just, a, he is what you want a wide receiver to be just like AJ Brown. So, uh, I think he can work on his, uh, route running. Um, it, he's not the fastest. So I think people, you know, get a little scared by that. Uh, his 40 time was a 4.61. Clearly the people go up, oh, can't be good if you're at, and look, man, um, I understand that, but he's a big dude. He goes up and gets it. He is that extra receiver <clears throat> that you're looking for on the outside. So, um, I got him lower because we don't really need that, but I really like this kid and would not be against adding someone like him. Now we're going to take a break after this number seven and let me get over to the comments, but I've got a guy at number seven here in Malachi Corley, and let me tell you about Malachi Corley because I am a big fan of this young man, and here is a guy that, you know, going to be more of your slot, they call him the Yak King at Western Kentucky. I've heard a lot of comparisons to Debo Samuel, that gadget type player. You know, try to just get the ball in his hands, and he's a tough little bastard. And, uh, you know, running a 4.43, he's uh, a 355 pound bench, dude. This kid, he's a tough little bugger. And uh, once he gets the ball in his hands, you can throw the ball to him, uh, you know, from a plethora of ways, dude. I think that this kid. You know, uh, getting that name at Western Kentucky may be a little premature. So when you come to the NFL, we'll find out. But, you know, 5'11", 210 there. I think that this is a kid that uh, he's got a great chance here in the NFL. And I, I think he's going to have to work on becoming a true wide receiver, you know, working on his route running just because, you know, he's at Western Kentucky. And that's not, you know, their fault all, a lot of times. So. It is what it is, man. Uh, we'll see. But I like this kid, and I've got him here at number seven. And that was my back end of the six. And then we're going to get into the top six here in a second. But I see there are 11 comments. So let me jump over here really quick. And then uh, I will jump back in and get to the top six. But let me know how you feel about some of these guys. And uh, if you uh, like any of them. Uh, let me know if you don't let me know if there's someone I didn't mention. You can also let me know about that. But uh, we jump on over here and uh, can we don't you play wide receiver? Yeah, uh, I think the key word would be um, I did play. Uh, but I, yeah, you're right. I always and if you're a wide receiver, you know, always wide receiver. I'm catching everything. Oh, still. Uh, yeah. Yep. No doubt. But um, you're right. Old man river. Get my ass in there. Uh, yeah, right, dude. I. uh was running stuff today and uh i've got like a mesh down there because all this stuff i had and i was hurting i was hurting and i was thinking i was like man this sucks like getting old like i would love to be out there still playing but there ain't no way my ass is out there but too funny too funny put me in coach i probably won't play uh but uh you know i just see breaking to the fourth round yeah i'm not really seeing too much uh need there as we talked about that but uh how are we talking about first round uh uh well that you know i'm gonna be giving you that one here soon but uh but we'll see okay so let me see you guys talking down here cool one six fours long strider no doubt no doubt he's a big boy and i'm a big fan so uh now we're gonna get into the top six here and uh again you can let me know how you feel about that back end six and again remember this is not the top receivers in this draft i've already given you my list of who the top guys are in my opinion but uh, these are the fits for the Eagles. Let's jump right into it. And I know a lot of you guys would have this guy higher, but um, I just kind of like some of these other guys more. So let's jump into it here. And we've got Lad McConkey. I know a fan favorite. Don't know if that's just because they like his name. They like him because he's white. I'm not sure. But, <laughs> dude, this kid, you know, he's six foot one, 186, but he does run a 4.39. So, it's not just this, you know, oh, he's a slot white receiver. Yeah. No, he's actually pretty fast. I actually do like this kid, and I think he is going to be in the second round. So that's why I don't have him as high because I think he's really good, but I don't think that the Eagles need to use one of those higher picks on the offense, uh, well, wide receiver at least. Uh, but look, man, this dude, I mean, he's a great athlete. We talk about it. He actually is great at, you know, getting that ball, dude. Uh, the ball tracking is really impressive from a little guy like him. And he's six foot. He's not really that little, but he does look like it. He's probably the best route runner 
in this class class and he's actually a really good blocker so this is somebody that i mean what he goes up and gets the ball at his size i just think he is super fun to watch he would be really exciting to have on this roster and i think if you weren't so good i would have meyer on this list but i don't know that it's and again it's not that the eagles need but i think he goes higher than where the eagles are going to be looking but maybe they trade you know their 22nd pick and they move back and you know, whatever the hell happens. But I think a guy like McConkie would be awesome to add, you know, with A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. And Jalen Ertz would, I'm sure, be thrilled to have a guy that, you know, fights for extra yardage. This is a dude that, you know, doesn't have to just play in the slot. This is a guy that you can move around. And, you know, with that speed, you can do a lot of things with him. And you can see, you know, punt returner. He can run the ball. He really just get the ball into his hands. But a very exciting player. And, I honestly would love to have Lad McConkey here. And I know Georgia is another reason people would love to have him. So, uh, little G, I know you uh, would be excited there. Uh, I know you uh, are always throwing out Georgia and Alabama. So, there you go with the Georgia. But uh, let's get into the top five here. And uh, at number five, maybe not the Texas guy you were hoping for, but Adnay Mitchell. This dude, he transferred from Georgia, but... Uh, dude, at Texas, this kid's six four, hundred ninety six pounds, and um, let me be real with you here, Adne Mitchell. I'm not so sure is six four because when you watch him, looks a little more six three, six two ish. But uh, football database, I don't know, man. Again, I feel like they let these kids just write in what they feel, but uh, I'll take it up with them. I'm just telling you, I I think they're shorter. So, uh, look, uh, this dude. 4.3440. So his teammate, you know, breaking records. Obviously, this dude is overshadowed here, but 1,400 yards, 18 touchdowns, and 28 starts, 15.1 yards per catch there. And didn't really have much else, you know, running the ball or returning or anything like that. So I didn't add those stats. But uh, this dude's got that long speed we were hoping for in a guy like a Quez Watkins. But this dude is much better than Quez Watkins. And I really feel like this dude he is so good that he'll go in the second round so the reason i've got him so high is if you're gonna go for somebody i think this is the guy maybe he falls with one of those second round picks and oh man this kid is seriously really fun to watch go check him out but i think that this is the kind of guy we were looking for with quez Watkins, you know but he does everything quest couldn't do you know he has a great route tree he actually uses his body you know and that speed and i think that that's something that Quez just had speed. He didn't do anything else. And I really, and not to knock him, but this dude, you know, going up and getting the ball, being able to do the things that a wide receiver should. I just feel, uh, you know, we kind of need that. So uh, look, but uh, not the greatest after he gets the ball in his hands. And we've been talking about guys that can do that. Uh, he needs to work on his blocking. And I think, you know, just another young kid that needs refining. But um, if he starts falling, maybe, and, He's in the third, maybe, and do you want to trade up with that fourth? With I don't know, man. I, but I think that this kid, really talented, and, oh, man, I I really think you should go check him out because he's really fun to watch. Um, uh, But, you know, hey, look, we'll see. Uh, I don't think that the Eagles necessarily need to go that high. So we're going to talk about uh, a guy named Ricky Pearsall here. And, look, I know you're probably thinking, how the hell is this guy in front of Keon Coleman and some of these dudes? But – Again, this is not, these guys are better. This is, in my opinion, a better fit for where the Eagles should look. So this is a guy with one of those second round picks. Maybe, you know, again, that we talk about, you trade that fourth, move up, trade one of those seconds and move back into the third. He's there, whatever. But kid runs a 4.4146, one, 190 pounds. And dude, he just looks so effing fun to watch. Like just watch how quick he looks out there. I think this is somebody, you know, great route runner that is able to separate. This is somebody that, you know, you can use in a plethora of ways. You can see running the ball, returning the ball. So you want the ball in his hands. That is, you know, the kind of things you want to see from him. And, um, you know, clearly I say good route running, but I think that you got to work on these things when you get to the next level. And that's obviously with most of these guys. So you'll hear, I, I try not to be too negative about these kids because I want to talk about what they're good at. And, I think that, you know, his versatility, being able to play inside, he can play outside. That is what enamored, you know, me, man. And he over 2,400 yards, he's got 14 touchdowns there and 34 starts. But um, look, get the ball in his hands. 
watch him fly. But the reason I like him is because I think this is more reasonable than some of these other guys who might go a little bit higher. And if they're not available, I think this guy, ha there's a better chance that we could lock him up. Now, these next guys, this is um, <clears throat> a little bit different of a mindset than literally what I've been talking about just because it's what wide receivers do to me. Yeah, you saw it mentioned here by China. Yeah, um, I got a thing for the wide receiver position, and uh, I get excited talking about him, and I get flustered just trying to figure out who I want to put where because I'm always like, man, I like this kid, but I like that guy. and uh, uh, But yeah, but this guy fits better, and it makes me go crazy. But uh, watching these guys, man, it makes me go crazy thinking about what they could do in this Eagles offense. So you're looking at a dude that, Maybe he's lying because I think he's more like 6'2". Uh, I'm not giving him 6'3", but 227, runs a 4.3940. This dude, really fun to watch. 1,600 yards and 32 starts, 12 touchdowns, 14.9 yards per catch. And you see he's got some kick return ability. So that's usually pretty telling. But this is one of those guys that you're going to have to use one of those second-round picks. And you might have to move up a little bit. Um, I don't know, but if he falls to you and he is there, oh, my God, I don't know how you don't go get someone like him. This is, again, we need somebody that is actually can catch the damn ball, be dependable there. And I think the, the speed he's got, his acceleration, the way he runs his routes, he actually uh, goes up and gets the ball. That is something that I just think that this kid, He's so effing fun to watch. And, you know, there's one Xavier everybody's talking about, but I think Xavier Leggett is legit. And uh, that's somebody that I think most people are sleeping on a little bit too much. But uh, I think that, um, you know, he needs a little refined here. So maybe that helps us out. Maybe he, you know, falls a little bit here. But I would be all about adding Xavier Leggett here. Um, but. Again, he's going to have to toughen up, work on his blocking, route running, things like that that most of these kids have to. But um, don't uh, want to knock him too much other than you're lying about that height. But um, let's get into it here. Number two, this is the Texas guy. This is the Xavier that you've been waiting for. Sorry that you keep getting thrown these curveballs. But 6'172 pounds. And this dude, obviously, he's got everyone's attention and now and – Look, there's a lot of talented receivers. You know, we talk about Mitchell, Whittington, I mentioned earlier, and Worthy there at Texas. So a lot of really good receivers, but they were able to eat. But this dude, a 4.2140, holy shenanigans, 39 games, 39 starts, 2,700 yards, 26 touchdowns, 13.9 yards per catch. And look, get the ball in this kid's hands. He is fun to watch. But here's the thing. You can't get caught up with speed, right? You can't just be all about speed. Oh, this guy's fast. Who cares? But this guy, I actually, you know, watching him, I feel like he really can do a lot more than just be that playmaker. He is an athlete. He's got that explosiveness that you want to see, but he actually uses it, man. And obviously a four point, he, he's got the record, man. He's fast. Yes, we know that. But you have to be able to, you know, do things as a receiver. He's six one, so he can play inside. He can play outside. And I think that, He's got those ball tracking skills. He's got to work on that route running, but I think that he's pretty good at that route running. Um, and for a college kid, I think he's one of the better route runners. Uh, to be honest with you, I think that the knocks I've heard on him, I don't know, man. I think that this kid is going to be a stud in the NFL. I think, you know, yeah, a lot of times, you know, you think about guys that come into the NFL and just, you know, don't do anything because speed isn't everything. Look at John Ross, you know what I mean? So uh, for me, I think this kid, it's like Chris Johnson. Like, yeah, he's got speed, but this dude knows how to use it. And my Lord, if you're going to go high on a receiver, which I don't think you should, but if you do, I would be ecstatic. Now, you're going to lock up Devontae Smith. You have A.J. Brown coming up in a couple of years. We'll figure out. But you get a young kid on a rookie contract, and you don't have to worry about anything because you know you got a stud learning from these studs, and you've got Jalen Hurts, some weapons here, baby. So not uh, against it at all. but. My number one, I had to come back down to reality and pick a more reasonable pick here, right? Because I don't want to go too high with wide receiver. I've got some other ideas, but again, if some of those things happen, I am not upset. But number one here for me, Johnny Wilson. And he's got 6'7", but I think he's more like 6'6". But hey, I'll take it. 237, this dude. Oh, my Lord. 4.5240 for that size. 
26 starts, 1,700 yards, eight touchdowns, 17.2 yards per reception there. This dude is a beast. And uh, look, let's be real here. Someone like that, you need to be able to go up and get it. You need, you should be doing that. And obviously you create mismatches all about all around, man. And this is a guy that you get that ball in his hands and he actually is going to make plays. And for that size, the way he moves, man, like he looks like a linebacker runs like a running back. Like dude, uh, I'm telling you, he goes up and gets the ball. He is so fun to watch, but you know, I, I think that, you know, he definitely needs to work on becoming a receiver. I think he kind of got away with in high school, probably just jumping all over people, kind of did it more in college, you know, but I, I think he really needs to just work on, you know, his route running, uh, opening up his route tree more than just, you know, being bigger than guys. And I think, you know, if using that size, continuing to, you know, fill out, get, you know, he's going to get older. He's obviously going to get stronger, bigger, and, you know, he'll work on that blocking. He'll work on these things. And I think for me, this kid would, he's my number one fit because I think some teams, you know, they think that, you know, he's raw. So he needs a lot, but look, obviously some teams are willing to take shots on some of these receivers that are like him. So I wouldn't be surprised, but the reason I'm saying this is I'm not saying we should go high and take Johnny Wilson because look, I think if someone does, they're going to be happy about it because I think he's going to be a stud. But I'm saying to me, if he is there with that fourth round pick that you have, you got to take this kid. Or maybe he's in the third round. You make a call. Hey, we're going to move up. We'd like to take him. Now, obviously, six, seven there, six, six, whatever. This dude, you know, you would want to think outside into, but look, man, none of that really matters when you have guys like AJ Brown, you have Devonte Smith. These guys are interchangeable receivers that you can play inside, outside. You can move guys around. You hope that Covey is the fourth receiver can play in the slot as well. So the guy doesn't have to be on the field all the time as a rookie. So to me, this is the place to come learn how to be a receiver from guys like AJ Brown and Devonte Smith. Yeah. That's who I'd want to learn from. And I think this would be the perfect fit for him. Uh, he's just a freak athlete. And, you know, I think putting him on this offense would be scary as shit. Uh, giving Jalen Hurts, you know, just a threat like that, a you know, big body. Obviously, we've got some guys in AJ and Dallas, but we needed some work there last year. And I think adding someone like him, man, yeah, those other top guys would be awesome. But um, to me, it's more reasonable to, you know, go with one of those fourth rounders or maybe, you know, one of those three fifth rounders to get a wide receiver. So, that's all I've got for you tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Got to get up at 5 a.m. So, oh, my Lord. And I'm still in my work clothes. Didn't even get to get a shower. It's just like, is life even real at this moment? I just don't even know what sleep is. But I'm glad I got this damn show out because I wanted you guys to have this. Got to get the tight end show out. Uh, somehow, tomorrow I'm going to be really busy. Um, ah, so, hope to see that by Thursday. And then um, we'll get offensive line done, hopefully, by Saturday. Clearly, Fan Friday is going to be Friday. So we'll get the offense done this week, like I talked about. And then we'll get to the defense. We'll be ready for the draft. We'll I'll give you my pick, who my number one guy is. Let's go. But um, my Lord, my Lord, what a crazy draft this is going to be. There's so much talent. We're just, we've looked at the quarterbacks, running backs, receivers. And obviously, if you watch or pay attention to anything else, you know that there's a lot more talent. The tight ends we're about to talk out, you know how serious I feel about that position. Offensive line, the defensive line, the linebackers, the corners, the safeties, all of it. Oh, my Lord, I cannot wait. But, uh, yeah, right, there is a bunch of really cool names in there. So, uh, pointing out that we got Shady, Miles, Sanders, and Hurts, 53rd picks. We have 53rd pick this year. It's going to be electric. Yeah, that's a good – Rube's always great with that stuff. Um, thanks for pointing that out there, China. But, um, yeah, a big dude. I think he's more like 6'6", six, six, but I, I'm telling you, most of those, that's all from the football database. So you could take it up with them. But I feel like those heights, some of those guys, I mentioned it for each one that I feel like, mm, I'm not so sure about that. But um, uh, yeah, I told you why I like those guys. There are an ass load of further back receivers. I just like so many of those receivers. It was seriously hard to even pick some of these guys because there were so many top guys I wanted, but I wanted to give you some back end guys. So I did that, um, and look, there's a plethora of dudes that you don't have to draft high here. And, you know, you brought in Campbell, you brought in Parker, so I understand if you don't, and, you know, you bring in some other young guys to compete, you hope that Covey develops. I, Sure, okay. But I am not against, like, really giving a spark. You know, 
you see teams like uh, the Bengals when they've got Chase and Boyd, and then they add a T. Higgins, and it's like, what the dog? Um, that's because you know putting up points wins games. So, uh, but so does having a defense. Uh, so they got to figure it out. You got to see who the best player available is, how the draft's falling, all that stuff matters, man. So uh, keep that in mind. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Who your favorite wide receiver is in this draft? Where you hope the Eagles go in this draft of wide receiver? You hope that they use one of their first, second, third picks, the later picks, whatever it may be. We've got eight of them. You saw all of them. You saw all the information you needed to know. That's all the information I got. But I will be back hopefully tomorrow if I can. Tomorrow's going to be a crazy day. Um, might just be a live video. Uh, it's definitely not going to be the tight end show. Tight ends will be out Thursday. I promise you. So, uh, yeah, but if you guys need anything, you know you can always reach out. doesn't have to be about the birds. You just need a friend, whatever it may be. But, uh I'm going to try to get some sleep tonight. <laughs> we'll see about that. But uh, long day tomorrow. If anything happens throughout the day, I will be unavailable. So uh, I'll post about it, make a video about it when I can, wherever I can. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor. Hit that like button down below. You can always subscribe. But, um, yeah, Leggett, um, dude, right? I talked about that familiarity, just looking like a guy. And we've got a couple guys in there. Keon Coleman, you've got dudes that having an X receiver doesn't, you know, necessarily mean it's a bad thing when you've already got one, especially when your guys are interchangeable. These guys are good route runners. They, it's funny. It's like people think it's bad and then like you can't move them around. Like, yeah, dude, that's the name of the game. That's why we like a lot of these versatile pieces. But Xavier, I appreciate you tuning in, my man. I was just rolling out. But if you rewatch this, would love to hear your thoughts. But 5 a.m. comes early, so I got to get rolling out here. But have yourselves a great rest of your night. Hope to see you tomorrow. But until next time, I am Jimmy Smith, and this is On the Road to Victory. You all stay safe out there. Have a good one. And as always, say it with me now. Go Birds!